Hello everyone and welcome to Ed Research Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on the differential diagnosis imaging based for inflammatory bowel disease. So as you all are aware or if you have not seen the previous video, this is a series of videos on inflammatory bowel disease and we are discussing phase one that is detection and diagnosis of disease. We have already seen the clinical features and the differentials based on clinical features. We have seen the laboratory investigations that are useful for diagnosis of IBD as well as for differential diagnosis. And we have seen the basics of imaging modalities that are available and which of them to be used and when. I'm sure by now you can remember some of these differential diagnoses because this is the differential diagnosis list that we are going to use throughout our series as these are the commonly seen conditions that can mimic inflammatory bowel disease. So now when we come to differentials on imaging, the upcoming slides are just brief on all these diseases and what are the classical appearances or classical features that you see on these diseases on imaging. So for ulcerative colitis, we have already seen P is the term, panka we saw as multiple choice question, pipe that is lead pipe appearance. Other is garden hose appearance or pseudopolyps, right? You see pseudopolyps in ulcerative colitis. Coming to Crohn's disease, very commonly asked questions. Cobblestone appearance is a common question. String sign of Cantor, hello sign on CT. You have raspberry or rosethorn appearance and the comb sign is also seen in Crohn's disease. We have already discussed the comb sign. You can see it on MR as well. T1 MR, right? Mural stratification is the most common finding that you associate with Crohn's disease. So what is mural stratification sign? It is stratified enhancement of the intestinal wall with wall thickness more than 3 mm. Now, this is one of the most characteristic findings in Crohn's disease. What happens is that there is sandwich-like appearance, okay, with some layers enhancing, alternating layers non-enhancing. So, that is mucosa and muscularis enhances and the in-between submucosa does not enhance. So, that is what gives this mural stratification sign in Crohn's disease. Now, this enhancement pattern reverses because of fluid. In T2 imaging, submucosa becomes hyperintense, whereas mucosa and muscularis become hypointense. Okay, so the enhancement pattern reverses between CT and MR. So, whenever you are asked the question or you are seeing these images, remember that the findings are reversed between CT and MR. And mural stratification sign is the most characteristic finding that you can see in Crohn's disease with an intestinal wall thickness more than 3 mm. Now going to tuberculosis, it's a separate topic in itself, but <clears throat> pulled up cecum is the most common thing that we see in intestinal tuberculosis. Because of pulled up cecum and the appearance, that area is a lot of different uh, names. You have inverted umbrella sign, stearlin sign, gooseneck deformity or fleshner sign. Other things that you can see in intestinal TB more commonly is lymphadenopathy, right? So that is the differential diagnosis for tuberculosis. Coming to ischemic enterocolitis, the most common sites of ischemic enterocolitis are the vascular watersheds, the splenic flexure and the rectosigmoid junction in colon and the jejunum in the small bowel. Very commonly asked question. Splenic flexor, rectosigmoid junction, and jejunum are the vascular water sets. Most common sign seen is thumb printing. Other names are target sign, bowel wall thickening, and pericolonic infiltration and stranding. It what results in producing a target sign. Again, like mural stratification, target sign is alternating enhancement. So these features will reverse between CT and MR. Important to remember. If you have ischemic gangrene, you can have pneumatosis intestinalis or portal vein gas or free air in cases of perforation. If you have known into the causes of ischemic enterocolitis, you can see a thrombus or embolus known as a meniscus sign or a planar defect on angiography. 
prolongation of arterial phase is seen in vasospastic states and phlebosclerosis, the presence of calcification in the venous system can also be present. So all these are features in a scan that you can see for ischemic enterocolitis. Splenic flexure, rectosigmoid junction, jejunum, intestinal features, features in the cause, that is the vein or the artery, prolongation of arterial phase. Differentiating between Crohn's disease and TB is important when small bowel involvement is there. Understand that if more than four sites are involved with eccentric strictures and long segment small bowel involvement, this is more common in Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease usually does not have significant lymphadenopathy and there is no necrosis. Caseous necrosis is commonest in TB. Okay, and com sign and fat trapping are not common in TB. TB involves usually less than four sites and the strictures are concentric. Okay, so this is basically the scan-based differentiation between Crohn's disease and TB. Other thing is TB will usually involve omentum and ascites is common and the features of Crohn's disease which is fistulizing Crohn's is not common in TB. Okay, you can have enteroenteric fistulas but enterocutaneous fistulas are rare in TB. So, more than four sites involvement with absence of lymphadenopathy with mesenteric fat creeping and wrapping with no ascites and the classical cobalt stoning or deep ulcers, all these features are common in Crohn's disease. Now coming to pseudomembranous colitis, the pseudomembrane can be seen in double contrast barium study. You can have pericolonic stranding, you can have toxic megacolon. A very common sign in pseudomembranous colitis that is us is accordion sign. What that means is that there is trapping of oral contrast in between the thickened edematous folds of the colonic mucosa. This leads to the mucosal outline becoming shaggy and lead to bowel wall thickening. So that is appearance looking like accordion. That is why known as accordion sign. Pseudomembranous colitis can again result in toxic megacolon. Then you will have features of toxic megacolon. And that in turn can lead to ischemic colitis, which is thumb printing and perforation. Intestinal Bessette's disease, we have already seen most common site is ileocecal region. It has deep ulcers. Okay, This you have to remember that in Bessette's disease, the lesion has deep collar button ulcers with ring-like protrusion. Okay, The involved segment enhances brightly on IV contrast. And it does not have significant lymphadenopathy and perientric stranding. Okay. Complicated forms can present with perforation, hemorrhage, peritonitis, or fistula, but that is also rare in Bassett's disease. Okay. In CT, the bowel wall appears thickened and there may or may not be a mass. If there is a mass, there will be central ulceration. Remember, most common site, ileocecal region and deep collar button ulcers with ring like protrusion. So that is regarding most of the differential features on imaging. Remember all these signs because they are commonly asked and they are seen in practice and they help in identifying specific diseases. In the next video, now we will go on to the third pillar which is the endoscopy. Thank you.